everybody, Petula here. Today we'll be talking about Agile principle number six. And also we're going to be talking about what is it that you as the Agile coach or maybe a Scrum Master or an Agile manager can do to support this principle in action in your organization and in your teams. That principle says the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. A lot of people associate this principle with co-location, and that's partially true. So a lot of people like to think about co-location as the most important interpretation of this principle. In a way, it is true. If you look at the history back then, developers were in a corner room and they would get all their information and the requirements for their software in written form in a memo and they you know nobody would really talk to them they would not really know what is going on now collocation is amazing there is no doubt being in the same room with all your team and including the people from the business undebatable like it's really the best way but it's not the only way for working together and i feel that this principle actually unveils something a little bit deeper than just to stay in the same room with your team so the interpretation that i really like and i feel that is fitting even now that we have pandemic times the work remotely from anywhere times is this principle talks about direct communication synchronous communication so what do I mean by that? I mean, be careful with all those email threads. Of course, having things in written form documented in an email, that is not a bad thing. But don't use email or things like an email as the tool to communicating and to converse. Conversation is the best way. So there are a few obvious things that happen to us today in technology. Use video conference your teams being in a different location your peers your customers that is here to stay and you know the technology couldn't be better at this day and age we have several tools for video conferencing some of them are even free so there is really no excuse to not showing up in video where i can see all the non-verbal cues in action but now let's say if you don't have video you still have voice you can still pick up the phone it doesn't matter maybe it's a bad hair day i don't know for whatever reason you cannot show up on camera i still have your intonation i still have things you know it's just so much easier to be able to ask you a question and have an answer bouncing back right there and then we can collaborate co-create things together much more easily than in written form for example so email are not direct communication and that's the the important piece that actually i want to put it in here uh, you might want and you might need to document things in an email of course go ahead and do that but email is not a conversation tool email is more so like documentation so when you ask something to anybody it can take a few minutes to a few hours or days for you to get the answer and then you know, depending on how many people are in the email, a lot of things happen in there and it's very confusing to catch up what you really need. And imagine all that time span and confusion that you, you had and you could just be on a 10, 15 minute call with that person. That's really what we're talking about in here. Now, what about chats? People have it at their fingertips. They have Microsoft Teams, they have Slack or whatever tool that you use on their phones. And it's so quick and easy, right? Well, I would say chats also do not constitute direct communication. Don't get me wrong. I love chats. I think your team should have all of those and they are organized by channels. It's a wonderful tool, but it's still not direct communication, not in the sense that I talk to you, you answer me. There's other people in the chat and sometimes the, the chat scrolls so fast that you have to keep trying to find things. Not a good way. Even, let's say, if, it, if it's even a chat between you and someone else, only the two of you on the chat, you will notice in any case, we do tend to write a little bit differently in chat. We, we jump to a few conclusions, we skip a few steps, and it's actually more prone to miscommunication, even though people might think that, yeah, I got it, I'm going to do it. So I would say direct communication when you're trying to solve a problem is really the best. So direct communication is 
voice. Direct communication is visual. So if you don't have those, you're not in direct communication with your people. And that's what this principle is all about. So that's what I would be coaching folks about this principle. And that's what I encourage you to think about as well. In the end, you have to ask yourself, uh, why are people not communicating face to face, aka in a direct form? Why is everything in written form? Now, don't get me wrong, back in the day, early 1990s even, we had already open source community creating amazing software. Um, so it is possible, of course, that the written communication will work. But things change so fast now. The rhythm is so fast paced that you really want to be able to catch up on things as they happen and avoid miscommunications. It's so much easier to start on the right foot than it is to just go back and reiterate and try to understand something that, you know, it just could have done the first time around if it wasn't for a quick chat that you sent on a Friday night. So I would really try and figure out what's going on with my teams, with my peers, um, why people have such a hard time necessarily picking up the phone or turning on their cameras and start the conversations, the direct communication type of conversations with them around that part. I do structure this content a little bit more in the blog post link down below. So go check it out. This video ends here. I hope it was useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.